Well, this is Brother Peter. Sure, I'm proud to be with you this morning. This is Tidbits from the Word. These are little 10 minute segments that the Lord has me do. And we're going to graduate probably uh, into some things that will be more timely, take more time, and try to be a little more constructive. But this is a constructive 10 minutes talking about the Word of God. Time spent with God, time spent with the Lord, must be spent with the Lord in righteousness. What is righteousness? Righteousness is purity. What is purity? Purity, by the way, Bible words. How many Bible words do you know? Are you learning Bible words? I, I, you, have you asked Jesus to forgive you of your sin, come in your heart, save your soul? And since you did, you started learning Bible words. I asked a man the other day, he said he was saved. And I said, well, tell me a little something about it. Well, you know, I believe this man met Jesus at a church. And I said, I believe that this man met Jesus at a church. And I believe he said, Jesus, I want you to forgive me of my sin. Come in my heart, save my soul. And I believe he said that, but I believe when he walked out of the church, he left Jesus at the altar and didn't take him home with him. You know what that means? That means that that man didn't mean what he said and didn't get saved, didn't really get saved. He didn't mean what he said. I asked him, I said, when you said I do to your wife, did you take her home? He said, I sure did. And I said, you've lived with her ever since, and you all try to live together and do the best you can together and be together and do all this and that. Yeah. Well, I said, what about your church time? Well, I haven't had time to go to church. Wow. Well, when you do go to church, well, we go periodically. I said, do you go to Sunday school? I don't know. It's too, it's too early. Oh, it's for kids or whatever. And we don't get, hey. Did you mean what you said when you said, Jesus, forgive me of my sin, come in my heart and save my soul. I want to follow you as my Lord the rest of the days of my life. Did you mean that? Well, if you meant it, what, what's causing you to not, not follow up? You took your wife home with you. You sleep with her. You end up with children. You end up uh, loving each other throughout the years. You end up growing in love. You end up going places together, you end up doing things together, and yet you say you've asked Jesus to come into your life, but you don't give him any place in your life, no room. You don't even say a blessing when you eat. You walk into a restaurant, you get some food, you set it down before you start stuffing your face. You don't even ask God to bless the food that he gave you, and you say, that you've asked him to save you, you got you a problem, a big and serious problem. That you didn't mean what you said. Had you meant what you said, you would be convicted about what you do. When you took that woman home, you married her, you didn't go out and get in your car and go down and visit Susie down the street that you visited a week before then. You do not, after you marry that woman, you don't go down and pick up another lady and go out on a date. Yet you say, I asked Jesus into my heart, but I'm going to go down there and have me a beer, a beer joint. Uh, I'm going to let some words come out of my mouth that wouldn't suit the Lord that I say that I asked to save me. Or you're going to continue to lie, cheat, and steal that you did before you got, you asked Jesus to forgive you of your sin and not be convicted about it. You didn't mean what you said, fellow. Lady, boy, girl, whoever you are, you did not mean what you said. If you are not following through with your commitment, you didn't make a commitment. You said some words with your mouth. You did not say with your heart. When you say it with your heart, you'll commit to it. 
when you said to that lady, I do, and you committed to her, and I will cherish you until the day I die. Be, I'll cherish you through thick, through thin, through good, through bad, through sickness, through health. And did you mean it when you said that? If you did, you know the problem today is, is we got throwaway marriages. And we have throwaway Christianity. We have people who use God like they do their marriage. And they use it to their advantage. Go down to the church and see how many jobs they can get from the church house, from people in the church. And then they cheat people, and they don't do right, and they lie, and they steal, and they cheat, and they don't do good work, and they they, they do all kinds of things, because they're not really saved, because they don't have any, um, I'm going to tell you, even the people in the church today are under the fire line, that they're, they're, people are treating them as skeptical at best, because they say they're Christians, but they go around beating people. I meet people all the time that have been beat by Christian people. The Christian people have come up and borrowed from them and never returned it. And so therefore, we have those type of people out there. Listen, don't be a hypocrite. Be true. Verse 23. In verse 23, he said here, Jesus talking here. He said, the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. That's verse 21. Verse 22, chapter 8, in the book of Proverbs. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before the world works of old. Verse 23. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was Jesus Christ was set up by God the Father before the earth was the earth before the everlasting was set up the everlasting Jesus was with the Father God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Ghost have been from everlasting. And Jesus speaking here in chapter 8 as the word wisdom he is saying here that I was with the Father. Verse 24 When there were no depths I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water before the mountains were settled before the hills, I was brought forth. Wow. This is Jesus speaking. And verse 27. He prepared the heavens. I was there. When he set the compass upon the face of the depths, I was there. When he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, I was there. <laughs> this is Jesus. He was there. God in the flesh. He was there. He was set up. He was there. Uh, look at this in 29. When he gave the sea his degree, that his waters should not pass, his his commandment. What he appointed, the foundations of the earth. Listen, the sea is a living organism. Belongs to God. God set some boundaries around the shoreline of the sea. And he said, do not exceed those boundaries. And the sea can come up to where God set the boundary. This is how we know that the sea can change in the future and reclaim some places where it used to be.